So example 1.1, you are given, uh, the spring is has shown, look at that, K, K1, K2 are given, P is given. So we are to determine the global stiffness matrix, the assembled stiffness matrix for the whole system. We have three springs. We need to get the displacement at node two and three. You are required to determine the forces at node one and two and the forces in the spring two. So those are, that is the problem. You have looked at this uh, example very quickly. Uh, this one, you remember, we said, keep it at the fingertips that uh, K, K for an element will be K minus K minus K, K, K. That is the elemental stiffness matrix. And therefore, for element one, this will be, so K1 will be, K1 minus K1 minus K1. K. So K1 will be equals to 100 uh, minus 100 minus 100, then 100. And don't forget the unit is Newton per millimeter. The same case K2 is equals to 200 minus 200 minus 200, 200, K3 like that. So getting the elemental stiffness matrix is very simple. You have that K1, K2, K3, okay? We are calling K1 equation one, equation one equal to three. So next step is assembly. So you can see very simple. You have broken down each element. You've got an elemental stiffness matrix. You want to assemble so that you can get the global stiffness matrix. And as I said, now my bias is toward using the superposition method so that you don't have starts from force equilibrium method. So I just need to come here. And then I know I have four nodes, U1, U2, U3, u4 u1 u2 u3 u4 so this is why i was saying you may need a pencil so that you can make a faint line they guide you especially when you are solving this stuff this i know this is one u1 u2 i know this is u2 u3 and here you have u3 u4 and the same thing this is u1 u2 u2 u3 u3 u4 so what i just need to note is that this cell i need u1 u1 this is u1 note that as i'm saying this u1 i'm putting at the end these are not part of this uh, matrix so don't make them so pro pronounced eh? like, like they are part of this okay they are just to guide you so i need to this cell i want to put u1 u1 so when i come to matrix to stiffness matrix k for k1 I know you, I have element, you, at U1, U1, I have element 100. So I can move to another element to see whether, do I have any other component? So U1, U1 only appears in for K1, so that's finished. So I move to U2, U1, U2, U1, I have this minus 100 from K1. I can finish this row first. So I, I move to U3, U1. Where do we have U3 on top? Uh, top? So I have U3, no U1. There is no three U3, U1, because we only have U3, U2, and U3, U3. So this one now becomes a zero. And of course, U4, U4 there's no U1 here. Yeah. So zero. This means, where you have zero, it means there is no connectivity between node three and node one are not connected anywhere. Where you'll be having superposition is where you have nodes which are interconnected. Then we move to the second row, Column, the first uh, the first uh, column. So we are looking for U1, U2. So U1, U2 is this value, minus 100. Do we have another U1, U2? No. So this one is minus 100. Then uh, this is U2, U2. We are looking at U2, U2. For the element one, we have this 100. And again, when we come to K2, we have U2, U2 is 200. So this will be 100 plus 200, which will give us 300 and then we move to this we are looking at uh, for u3 u2 so u3 u2 so but by inspection or by observation you can see when we have finished with u1 and u2 and u1 and u2 we have covered it here it's like we are done with element one so u3 u2 you look at u3 u2 we have minus 200 u3 we don't have another one so this one becomes minus 200 again uh, U4, U2, U4, U2 is, U4 is only in element three. So U4, 
U2, you don't have U2, so this becomes zero. So finally, you can continue like that. So you can see where this proposition is occurring. Where you're having this proposition occurring is where they are shared node. Like this one we have found is addition of 100 plus 200. So, and so on and so forth. With that, you can be able to apply the principles of this proposition. We can obtain this equation. And this is what I was deriving in the previous slide. So you can see where we have this summation, where they join U2 and U2. This is one, two, three, four. So you're looking at this, node two is shared, node three is shared. So that's where you'll be having proposition between U2, U2, U3, U3. We have that proposition. All the other nodes are not connected. Now with that, we have obtained what we refer to as uh, the global stiffness matrix. Very simple. So this is just a simplification. You add the values. This is showing the steps, working. And then this is the global stiffness matrix. The other part of our question was on how do we determine the displacement of nodes two and three? Now we have the global stiffness matrix. So we can be able to get the global finite element equation. So equilibrium equation, what you just need, the equilibrium equation is the same as finite element equation. So what we are now introducing is this part. Yeah? We are introducing, so we, we already determined what's the global stiffness uh, matrix. So we need to introduce now the, the vector of the nodal displacement. And on this side, we have the vector of nodal forces. And then using the boundary condition, we can substitute these values. So F1, of course, is not known. This is the reaction at this node, the F1. Then uh, we have the F at node 2, F at node 3, F at node 4. And uh, values are given. F at no, There's no force applied on node 2, that is 0. There is a force P applied at node 3, that is P. And there, we don't know what is the reaction, F4 at node 4. Again, looking at this, our system, K1 is fixed and node 4 is fixed. So, and U4, so u1 equals to u4 is equals to zero. And then we have f2 is equals to zero. Okay. So this now simplifies our stuff because this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. Okay. To simplify, and then this is p. To simplify our workings, what we first do is that we take the values which are not zeros, u2 and u3, and then we have that condensed matrix. That's the first step, okay? So uh, to take this, we'll be left with this equation. This 300 will be left. So what we do, to, because we already have seen this is zero and this is zero. So this is U1 or U2, U3, U4. This is one, two, three, four U's. Eh? So what we do, because we know these are not the ones which are not non zeros, eh? we just simplify this by canceling other zeros. So U4, zero, and then we cancel both rows and columns. So that now we'll be left with this, this part, this part, and this part. Now, with that, we can have uh, applying the boundary condition and deleting the first and the fourth rows, which are zeros the first and the fourth row and of course the columns associated with them this is the column associated with zero node displacement so we are going to be left with this equation now of course now this is very easy you can be able to get what is u2 u3 solving that equation five you'll be able to get u2 u3 u2 is p of a 250 p is given as 500 eh, newtons so 500 divided by 250 is two so we have u2 and u3 is three millimeters uh, two millimeters and three millimeters now we did not just delete and ignore. So we simplify to be able to first solve the values of nodal displacement. Uh, then to get the nodal forces, eh, the reaction forces F1 and F4, now we can use now the equation that we, uh, the, row, the row one and the row four, eh, we can be able to get to, so that we have an expression for forces. So that now here, from the first and the fourth equation, you'll be able to get F1 is equals to minus 100 U2 to get the forces. Very simple as I promised you, okay? That's only solving simple or the black. So with that, now we look at what was the other question, the other part. The other part is, 
what is the reaction? So you have been able to get the displacement at node 2 and 3, U2 and U, U3, the reaction forces at node 1 and 4, that is F1 and F4, then the forces in the spring 2. This is recovery, recovery stage. We are recovering the values, we are determining the values for individual element, the internal values. What we need to do is we need to calculate or to write the finite element equation for that single element. Because the internal, the node of forces eh, that we need to calculate, eh, this is now element. We need, we are going back to the breakdown state. And then we are saying for this element one, we have this element one, we have force acting on node one of element one and force acting on node two of element one. And we know the elemental equation F is equals to K, uh, K U. Of course, remember to put the braces and and the square bracket. Eh? Okay. So uh, the K we know is K minus K minus K K. So it's two hundred. Two hundred minus two hundred minus two hundred two hundred. U one U two. F one. This is the the finite element equation for a single element. Element one. I j i is one j is equals to two. Okay, so here i is equals to. Uh, wait a minute. We are looking at uh, what is the question? Oh, we are looking at the force in spring two, not spring one. Spring two, the force in spring two. So here, i is equals to two and j is equals to three for element two. Now from, you just need to substitute. So F, external force, Fj minus Fj. So you already know at node two and three, you have U2, U3. So remember these are internal forces. These are not external forces, capital F. Eh? Those are internal forces, this is what we are calculating. So what you just need to substitute is U2, U3. These are nodal displacement, they are known. U2, U3, we already calculated this as two and three. And of course, we know for a single element, the force in one node, because of uh, the principle of equilibrium, so the force in one edge should be equal to, or the summation of the two forces on the two nodes should be equal to zero. So F3, internal F3 should be equal to negative internal F2. And that's why what we have simplified here, and we have found that the internal force in the spring is equal to 200 newtons. Very simple. All right. Bye bye for now. That's the end. I will stop sharing. I will stop streaming. So <clears throat> keep on liking, keep on subscribing.